Oh yeah, it'll spin the tires at will on this stuff, even at 50 miles an hour. Howdy y'all, fuzzy biker here. We've all seen this bike before. This is the Himalayan with a 462 big bore kit in it. I made a video about this a couple weeks ago. This is, uh, this is the third video I'm making right now. And uh, the difference this time is he's made a couple changes to it. Uh, the last video I talked about the, how much more power it had, how much uh, more reactive it was, and uh, that was really quite amazing. Uh, now he's put a cam in it. He put the, uh, I can't think of the name of the cam, I'll put it, I'll list it right here. But uh, it's got about 30, 40 miles on it since he's done that. And I will tell you, it's much smoother and it's much more uh, controllable power. And there's considerable amount more power. It's uh, very reactive in the lower end. Uh, he's done quite a bit of good work on it. He bought this bike used. It had the big bore kit in it. He took it apart, cleaned it up, tuned it all up, got it running better. Um, bought the cam. Put the cam in it, uh, I think a week ago now. And uh, we're just getting going on, on that with that feature. But uh, very good work, very good work. He's, he's an excellent tuner of motorcycles. He, he worked as a motorcycle mechanic for years, so he's pretty good at this stuff. Um, we talked about what to do next, you know, things to keep on going. You know, this, this is the most built up Himalayan I've ever ridden. And it's really quite a different bike than my bike. And actually quite a bit different from last time I rode this bike with the big bore kit. The big bore kit was one jump. The cam is a whole different thing altogether. Uh, but we're talking about uh, porting out the heads, um, possibly a bigger throttle body, especially if we poured out the heads. And then uh, he wants to remove the cat. There's a pre-cat in right here. He wants to get rid of that. The cat that's in the pipe is gone already. And uh, those things would let it breathe a lot better. That'd be the next step. And that might be a winter project. You know, he, he's done quite a bit to it already. And uh, it's really made quite a difference already. He's, uh, his goal is he wants a good on-off, ride-it-everywhere bike. And, and that's what a good Himalayan is. You can, I just drove 100 miles of pavement to get down to where he is in Missouri. And, you know, these bikes do that just fine. Uh, last night I rode 60, 60 miles of gravel, you know, just to around these bikes do that fine too uh, last week I rode you know probably 300 miles worth of gravel or more you know so these bikes they'll kind of do it all as long as you don't mind going 60 65 70 now with this upgrade to the engine he's got a considerable amount more power and he could actually gear it up and make it a bike where you could ride this thing you know 70 75 I think you could do that pretty well with this this amount of power especially with that cam. Uh, question about that, uh, we were talking about this, is the cam more important than the big, big bore? Is the big bore more important than the cam? Um, our conclusion is we like the cam. It's changed the nature of the bike. The cam is actually, the breathing and uh, the way that cam has worked seems to be what this bike really needs. Um, what would I do to my personal bike if I had to do one or the other? I think I would do the cam. Now. Uh, like I said, the next thing he's going to do, possibly, well, actually, the next thing he's going to do, he's got an ECU back here that's programmable, and uh, he's got a switch up here to control the maps. I, in the last video, I said that was for accessories, but that's actually a, a map control switch. Uh, he wants to uh, create some maps of his own or download some maps that are pre-made and try them with the big bore kit and the uh, cam and see what that gets him. Um, after that, like I said, the next thing would be removing the pre-cat, and then opening up this area here, porting the heads out a little bit. Even if you just grind them smooth, these are very rough inside. He's had this head all off, of course. And uh, then the next step would be a bigger throttle body. They make a, I can't, it's a two millimeter larger throttle body for this. So that's another route, uh, another thing to do. And I'm guessing over time he will do that because Everett does those kind of things. <laughs> Something I want to talk about are these mirrors. I didn't, I, I, I mentioned last time, but um, bar end mirrors that are made for the uh, Interceptor 650, they are not made to fit on these ends here. So what he did was he took these ends off, stuck, on, stuck them on a lathe and laid these down, laid the ends down so that these would fit over that. And, and I would tell you that I like these mirrors. They work very well and they go good with these. These are the uh, Royal Enfield hand guards right here. So Royal Enfield mirrors, Royal Enfield hand guards. Very well done. He put his uh, 
he tilted this up. There's two options on these older Himalayans. The 2022s don't have this option anymore, but the 21 and earlier have, you can tilt the windshield slightly right here. Put something here for his carrying stuff. He's got the crash bar, of course, added this reservoir cover and this brake cover. And he and I have talked about this. He's got a different one coming. He wants one that comes up this high and he's got one ordered that, we had to look, we both talked about that because that's something, I want one of these brake covers, but I want one that goes all the way up. And he did find one. Um, when he gets his, I'll look at that and see how it works. He did put this oil guard on here. I think that's new, kind of cool, you know. Um, I don't think he has any plans of doing anything with the, uh, like the foot pegs or anything like that, but uh, it's really quite a deal. He's got the Garmin working now that comes on when you run, turn them on, turn on the bike. Uh, last time I was just sitting there. Uh, I didn't notice his compass was working yet, but uh, you know what, we'll take this thing for a ride. And of course he's got the bigger rack on there. He put this larger rack on there so you can put a cooler on the back. But uh, you know what, I'm Fuzzy Biker. That's a hot rod Himalayan. It's a rough job, somebody's gotta do it. I'm gonna go take that hot rod for a ride. Wahoo. Okay, so I've ridden this around quite a bit already. And uh, I'd like to say that right off the bat, one of the biggest differences is the uh, engine is quite a bit smoother than it was last time. It still has all the power, but now it has a, you can modulate the throttle better. More responsive. I bet I can get the front wheel off the ground if I try hard enough. It just opens right up. I mean, it's your, the bike breathes a lot better than it did before and a lot more usable range of power, I would think. You know, before it was on or off, more like an on-off switch, a lot, a lot raw, you know, very raw. Now I would say it's, uh, still has all the power, has more power, but it has a much wider range of usability. I feel like I can do much more with this now than I could before much better engine braking incredibly good feel and response there picks right back up no no dogging out or uh you know underpowered feeling she climbs right up the rpm range without any problems at all just right there okay so what do i think about this thing well i think the cam is a very good thing for uh the range of the motorcycle when we did when they did the big bore kit that gave it a uh, like a chunk of raw power but it seemed like it was either on or off what the cam has done again giving it more power she's breathing better but it's opened up a range a very useful range it seems like wherever I'm at in the RPM band when I twist the gas it just kind of goes she has much better manners than she did before she's more rideable she uh, definitely has more juice I like it. I like it a lot. So would I do this to my motorcycle? Uh, if I needed a new top end on my bike, I would definitely get the big bore kit no matter what. If my bike wasn't on warranty and I wanted more power, of those two items, I think I would do the cam first and see what that got me. Now our friend Ricky, we're trying to talk him into buying a cam for his bike and so we could see what that does on its own with a stock 411cc engine. I think the uh, manners that it's provided this bike, wider range, wider uh, useful range, the cam is, has done that for us. I would get the big bore kit, like I said, if I needed the uh, top end done, I would definitely get that on there. But I would, of course, get the cam no matter what. If I had to do anything to the top, I would get the cam right away. All right, y'all, what do you think? Would you do this to your motorcycle? Boy, this is just a lot of fun. This is a great motorcycle, guys. These, these are good additions to this bike, and Everett has done well. Of course, he's got that Everett tuning that he's done to it. I've known Everett for a long time. Everything he gets runs good when he gets it, and runs even better after he has it a while. Runs great after he's had it a while. He seems to know all the little tricks, all the pluses and minuses that work together to get a motorcycle to run extra well. So we will have to check back with him in time and see where he has gone with this thing. I think putting the new clutch in was a good idea. 
That's another thing we're worried about, you know, more power, you know, the stock clutch. Well, they put a new one in, so we've got that under control. All right, my friends, we're going to take this noisy hot rod back. Hey, guys, life's too short. Get out there and ride. Enjoy it. Take some pictures and share them with us. I want to see what you're doing.